Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where Kirk Kerman is off on the third mission of this three mission set. That's right, after doing oh the lowlands, the midlands, the highlands, the flats, the lesser flats, the great flats and the greater flats, we have finally only got one biome left to check. Which biome is that? Well, it's the poles of course. Um, hi guys, how you doing? Um, we're, we're finally getting off. Um, the end is in sight of being able to, 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 to get off of uh, Minmus and start thinking about targets further afield. Um, maybe we'll be going to Juna next. Uh, maybe Eve. I think probably Juna. Juna's the easier target and I'm all about easy targets. Plus, hey, everyone likes Mars analogs, right? I think we might even start next season, as it will be next season, with... Um, maybe some sort of curiosity type uh, rover because everyone loves curiosity i might even send a phoenix type thing up to the poles phoenix was my favorite mission so far i mean don't get me wrong i, lo I love all the um i love all the rovers but the phoenix is a bit of the underdog you know uh, spirit opportunity and curiosity they they get all their headlines and phoenix was just there for a, a couple of months made some like ground shaking discoveries i mean it was one of the one of the first things to actually dig down under the soil and find out what's going on down there find ice actual ice but yeah anyway what we're doing right here is floating through space we're trying to make our way to the poles as uh, shown um i was a little bit bored so i decided to uh do a barrel roll as you do all the while preparing myself for what mysteries may lie in this most northerly reach of this particular planetoid after all i've not been nowhere other than the equatorial belt and anything could could uh, spring up and surprise me there. So I think what we're going to do first is... Oh, look, there's the anomaly over there. We are definitely floating fire. I think what we're going to do is just jump a little bit further ahead because, look, we've got a hell of a lot of arc to cover and, well, I've got more footage than I have time for in this episode. In fact, we're going to jump all the way up here where you can see we're starting to get pretty much directly over the poles here uh, a little bit of time acceleration takes us to a situation where you'll notice that the camera is panning round rather strangely and I decide that this is the exact point that I need to be thrusting my, my engines as hard as possible because here we are we're, we're at the point that the camera spins round and the maps like all done weird so th that that's how we know we're at the poles right yeah, look at Kerbin away there in the background reminding us yet again what it is we do all this for. Uh, the advancement of the species that we left back at our home planet so that eventually that we're not just constrained to our one little rock of floating through the void of nothing, that we can reach out and, and touch other planets, make our influences felt there, maybe set up home as the brave boys here have been doing for many an episode now um I, I i've lost track of how long this entire mission has lasted because like various ships have gone off at different times and come back um what we might have to do is check keith froggy waiter and and see what his mission time is um yeah that, that should give us a real indication anyway so we're coming down uh in a, a standard uh landing procedure i've also as you will notice put my internal view on uh, locked onto my radar altimeter because trying to tell what's going on at the top there is, is a little bit difficult and if I could just press C and I'm looking at the instrument that I, I like to use uh, then then awesome you'll notice that we have like less than 500 meters to fall and for some reason I decide that's the perfect time to be uh, like breaking my, my uh, velocity down to zero I, I'm not sure why um, I was just being over cautious which I admit I have a tendency to do uh, quite a lot on this game which is not a bad thing um, it makes sure that my Kerbals arrive safely and I don't smash up too many ships and, and things like this but it does make for slightly less interesting video well I, I think my videos are still quite interesting but it does make for slightly less uh, action-packed videos because let's be honest no one really likes the descent stage me least of all as i have told you many 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 times but anyway what we're doing here is we're using our rcs to try and uh stop us plummeting too quickly because i have noticed during my many uh trots around minmus in this particular vessel that the the the, the amount gravity pulls down on my vessel is about matched by what this this rcs can push up Hey, right, so there's a nice landing and what we're going to do now is spend a lot of time just kind of driving around pointed north basically which um should be simple but north keeps changing as you drive around up here and we want to find the exact north pole right so what i'm going to do is just kind of skip forward a little bit 
until I feel comfortable to uh, get Kirk out. Um, we, we've swung, swung around a lot here, uh, and I, I think I've narrowed it down. Now, you'll notice here that I found out how to get, EVA, uh, get Kirk out on EVA, despite his um, uh, portrait not appearing in the bottom right. If you care that much, you've got to f look around until your um, mouse says uh, command capsule as, appo um, as opposed to just not, I suppose. Um, and then uh, you click it normally, not right click it. So it bring brings up the list of astronauts and you go, this one, I want him out. Um, just like you would with the science depot. Okay, so we're slowly um, edging our, our way around, basically just trying to find the exact point of the pole here. Um, the, the problem here is that I don't actually have my nav ball up, though I have noticed that I've got um, a heading marker uh, on the top right. It is the, the, the very, very bottom line. It's currently saying 0 and 1. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just edging forward till we find this bit. So we plant a flag and go, ooh. Oh, as soon as it gets, gets rolled out. Ooh, this is the spinny bit. Uh, as close to the pole as I can go, as curbly possible, because uh, that that was literally as close as curbly possible, e even with all the um, all, all the mods that I have and stuff. It, that 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 is just like it, the limit. Um, I tried to transmit my EVA report because I noticed that you know you can do that for free. It doesn't cost you uh, any any less science. Well, it doesn't earn you any less science. But unfortunately, I wasn't carrying a uh, a, a, a communicatron with me, so I couldn't uh, make sense. Really, you don't have that in your EVA kit. Though I have noticed you can attach all sorts of things to your Kerbal with the uh, Kerbal attachment system, which means that next episode I'm going to be bringing you uh, a, a very interesting thing. We're, we're going to go out and do some some weird things just to round off round off this episode to epi uh, this episode count to number twenty. Anyway, I was having a little bit of trouble doing my uh, surface sample and EVA report, but after putting Kirk into the ship, taking him back out again, we were able to perform said scientific uh, procedures, and now we're just having um, my usual trouble trying to get him back into the capsule, because Kirk's a renegade, he, he doesn't like travelling in, in spaceships, and he, he doesn't see why he can't just fly everywhere using his jetpack. Uh, little does he know that his jetpack doesn't actually hold enough fuel to get him, well, safely to another point on the planet and then safely back. Uh, if he was trying to get up into orbit, he could do that because there's not much um, deceleration to be done, or not much reverse acceleration to be done there. Um, so we're going to try and uh, drive over the flag right now, just because it's always nice to take our vessel over the complete top of the pole. Um, just because it's all a bit weird, really, isn't it? Uh, and then we're going to try and locate where our vessel, uh, where our base is from this place. Um, after we do all the uh, materials bays and the goo canisters as close to on the poles as possible because well that's where the purest science is done as close to the north pole as possible uh that surely that's that's where all the best science is kept if that wasn't the case why would like russia and america and all the european unions and stuff fund all these uh, arctic expeditions to go and collect science from up there it just look, you can't fault my logic it must hold true <laughs> Anyway, the return rocket journey is just as eventful as the first rocket journey, and by that I mean, look, it was just a perfect arc. I managed to um, allow for the spin of the planet there, which I thought was quite good. Um, wasn't at all an accidental slight understeer to one side. <laughs> no, not at all. But anyway, we're going to jump forwards until we are pretty much overhead. And that looks close enough to me. Uh, we were doing a slight upwards burn there just to make sure that we got up to the brow of the hill rather than slamming into the side of it, as uh, we all know is a bit, little bit of a, a, a trouble state to find yourself in. Um, and just cruising down until we, we find ourselves right next to said base. We now have to drop about 100 meters per second. Per second that that's not too too hard to do we we just uh to keep down the building excitement that will uh, stop us from doing our jobs and concentrate on our instrument panels and just making sure we we, we get down safely because whilst the, the very end of the mission is in sight we could still just completely mess it all up by either crashing this ship too hard and losing all the science or by plowing into our refuel depot without really meaning to thus wiping out the ship that contains all the all the pre 
previous sciences we found, blowing up our uh, refuel points and meaning that all our scientific endeavours have been ruined, wiping out all meaning of this complete series. But I don't think we're going to do that. So we jump forward a little bit here, as, as you may or may not have been able to tell from that ever so uh, subtle edit right there. Um, and using both my brakes and my RCS, we still very nearly actually crash. Well, we do actually make a collision with the ship that contains all the science, and we very nearly did actually blow up everything. But it's all right. We managed to uh, to, to settle down fine, and we're now just going to park our ship here pick up all our science, maybe do a little bit of breakdancing because, you know, we've been on Mimus a while now and uh, it's always nice to show off our skills in a low gravity environment. Of course, to fully finish off this mission, there are a few things that Kirk needs to get out and do. Uh, the first one being, of course, moving all the science across to the vessel that will return all the science and indeed all the Kerbals. But that's easy, we just grab it out of one, uh, one cockpit, struggle thinking about why it's got everything. Uh, why it didn't get everything. They left one, one science experiment behind for some reason. Not quite sure why. Um, gonna wander over, make sure we get all the materials bays and the goo canisters. Or alternatively, we could consider uh, starting the ballet that is uh, linking up two vessels to be refueled. Uh, this always goes down so incredibly well because my jetpack skills are just top notch. Uh, indeed, they're so good that this time we decide not to go for the jetpack skills and just wander over there until we have to actually fly up to uh, make contact with the refuel nozzle but there we go everything's worked out fine and now we're going to fly over and get the um science material uh, science base here this of course being the last activity of the get all the science active uh mission sorry activity twice that's no good um and all we need to do now is fly kirk over to the escape plan uh, alexander's pride and dump all the science up in the main control uh, command pod there or we could do some really weird acrobatics thanks to the way the Kerbal Space Program does ladders and jetpacks. Whilst I have had some rather beautiful experiences from this particular way that the game deals with the two things, I've had uh, backflips, forwards, flips, cartwheels, little things like this, which, which, you know, are quite fun. I'd rather just get the mission finished at this point. We, we've spent many days and I really just... I just want to—I uh, want to be able to finish a mission in Kerbal Space Program and look at all that science there. So we're just going to store it down. For some reason, even though I don't still have the science on me, it still lets me review the science that I do not have me anymore. Okay, so now we just have um, a rather boring set of procedures that I think we're going to to skip over. Basically, I'm just going to get everyone out of their out of their pods put them in this return vessel and then move all the fuel from the base into the return vessel. Oh. I, I, I completely forgot that uh, Kirktonia uh, was being created at this point. A, a moment of solemnity as this most beautiful naming ceremony takes place. Uh, this of course is after the first flag was lost to the horrific time warp accident, I, I can only assume it was time warp, that managed to uh, place it several kilometers above our head. And that one time we switched to it, or focused to it if you will, it crashed to the floor in a hideous explosion right by Jeb's feet, traumatizing everyone at the base and making us rethink our plans for this particular island. So with the naming ceremony done and the science reshuffled, all that's really left to do is move all our Kerbals into the return vessel and all the fuel on the base into the return vessel. Uh, I don't think we need to watch that. I don't want to watch that again. It was ages of just watching green bars travel across. So we're going to jump forwards to here. So we've packed Alfred Durster, Kirk, Bill, Patlock and Jeb all in here. Every single one of them had a vital per uh, mission to perform in this mission vital role to perform in this mission. Um, Alfred and Durster of course were our science boys. Kirk was the man who went out and got the science done. Jeb was the man who went out and got stuff done because he's an arsehole. <laughs> Bill came and saved everybody and Patlock, uh, he was the trailblazer and not just the trailblazer, he was the one who provided all the fuel. I mean these missions wouldn't have gone very far if we didn't have the opportunity to come back and refuel after every science mission out there. So I think Patlock was the Kerbal of this particular mission. Uh, Without him, everything would have fallen fallen apart. Okay, so we've got a nice uh, maneuver node set up here, and well, we're just performing standard uh, return to Kerbin uh, orbits. We're, we're going to carry on until uh, we are completely perpendicular in Min to Minman's orbit. Orbit. We're going to fire hard um, retrograde, 
and of Midman's orbit, not of our orbit. That's an important thing to remember. And we're trying to get our periaps with Kerbin down as low as possible, hopefully within the atmosphere, because, you know, I didn't put that much fuel on this, and it's always good to save some fuel, right? One of the major issues that I keep having when returning back to Kerbin is this uh, inclination here. Um, no matter what I seem to do, uh, we, we just end up thrusting at some really weird angle, um, getting more and more inclined the more I thrust, even if I'm pointed in completely the opposite direction from what I was beforehand, uh, which to me screams that I should be going, I should be um, affecting my orbit in the opposite direction. But obviously that's not the case. Anyway, in the interest of not making another half hour episode, uh, we've skipped down until we are at the low point in Kerbin's orbit. Uh, you'll notice that I'm out of fuel here, that's because I performed a singular aero braking manoeuvre and this wasn't good enough. So when I was up at my apoapsis, we dropped, it, uh, dropped the periaps down even deeper into the atmosphere so that we could slow down quicker. There we go, there we go, we, so, we, we summed up everything that happened there. Uh, so... Here we go, the return the return journey. Um, hopefully we're going to make it down safe, and hopefully we're going to make it down somewhere close to the um, space centre. But that last bit isn't all that important. As we all know, as long as we just get it down on Kerbin somewhere, we can recover it and get all the sciences, and that's the important bit, after all. Okay, so we got picked up a bit of an oscillation here. Um, I also like the way that the purple from my lights and the orange from the heat shock work together um, and for some reason I popped my parachutes proper early um, mainly because I wanted to, to, to stop myself and, and slow myself down here so the only thing left to do now is to descend towards this rather glitchy planet surface here uh, now this had me proper worried on the way down uh, I didn't know where the surface was going to be I didn't know if the game was going to uh, tell it uh, tell that there was a surface there I didn't even know if I was just going to like miss and plummet all the way down to the middle of the planet um, and then end up with all my science because I have to remind you that this is the vessel with all my science on it in the middle of the planet which would be rubbish so what i'm doing here is i'm watching my radar altimeter um, because that's the one that tells me how far away i am from the actual surface uh, which as we're coming in over the, the the water actually matches up with what's going on on the top up there which is a rarity uh, it's very much a rarity um, and as we find out as we get down here this is merely a graphical glitch you can see that there is actually water there uh, and we're going to recover the vessel nicely leading me to say thank you very much for this uh, for joining me for this season i will see you next time when we will be doing all sorts of weird stuff we're going to go for a skydive we're going to um spend all this science we're going to go to juna and we're going to make a load of rovers so we'll see you that time bye also look at all this science i've got here